A few days ago, I released a documentary about the session players who contributed to George Harrison's massively popular 1970 album, All Things Must Pass. One of the many marquee musicians who played on the album was none other than world-class drummer and pop superstar Phil Collins. As we covered in the main story, Collins' performance of congas on the song Art of Dying was eventually cut from the final album, but born from this was a quick story that I just thought was too funny to not share with you. This is the hilarious story of the lengths that George Harrison would go to for a good prank. It definitely paints the former Beatle, known as the quiet one, in a different light, so stay tuned. Hello friends and welcome to this addendum to my documentary about the session players of All Things Must Pass. If you're interested in that episode, stay tuned for a link to that at the end of this story. Of all the players who contributed to George's massive masterpiece, 1970's All Things Must Pass, there was one name that went on to arguably the most successful pop career of any of them. A then unknown Phil Collins, who would basically go on to rule the 1980s both as a solo artist and as the frontman and drummer of the progressive rock band Genesis, did find himself in a crowded recording hall in EMI Studios in the summer of 1970. How Collins was brought into the studio is not exactly known today. As George would say in the 2001 liner notes, quote, a lot of people new to me came into the sessions, I know not how. But Phil remembers that apparently Ringo's chauffeur knew the manager of Phil's then band Flaming Youth and inquired if he knew of any percussionists who could come down to help on the album. His manager put Phil's name forward and so the young drummer sheepishly reported for duty. Phil said, quote, So I went down to Abbey Road and Harrison was there and Ringo and Billy Preston, Klaus Vorman and Phil Spector and we started routining the song. Phil Spector would say, let's hear guitar and drums, or let's hear bass and drums. And I'm not a conga player, so my hands are starting to bleed. And I'm cadging cigarettes off Ringo. I don't even smoke, I just felt nervous. But hilariously, after two hours of earnest conga playing by the fledgling star, everyone realized that Collins' microphone had actually never been turned on. <laughs> Phil continued to quote, Anyway, after about two hours of this, Phil Spector says, Okay, congas, you play this time. And I had my mic off, so everybody laughed, but my hands were shot. A few moments later, according to Phil, the room cleared out. He said, and quote, just after that, they all disappeared. Someone said they were watching TV or something, and I was told I could go. Despite this, Collins had eagerly awaited the release of the album so that he could crow to his friends about his name being in the liner notes of the former Beatles' massive new release. But his story got even worse. Phil remembered, quote, A few months later, I buy the album from my local record shop. Look at the sleeve notes, and I'm not there. And I'm thinking, there must be some mistake. But it's a different version of the song, and I'm not on it. Alas, for the first, but probably not the last time in Phil's career, he found one of his contributions had been left on the cutting room floor. We all know what happened with Phil's career next. He would join Genesis in 1971, leading to a run of classic prog rock albums that defined the genre, and after the departure of lead singer Peter Gabriel in 1976, also led to Phil being brought out from behind the kit to become the new lead singer of the band. Within just a few short years, Genesis would morph into a more radio-friendly band, and they began to have pop success. Then, in 1981, Phil would release his first solo album with the emotional LP, Face Value, which included the timeless smash hit, In the Air Tonight. This would begin a decade of huge pop success, both in Genesis and by himself, and Grammy and Oscar wins would abound going forward. But it turned out that Phil's lost contribution to the album was only the beginning. Cut to years later, Phil would say, quote, I bought Jackie Stewart's house. Stewart was a former Formula One race car driver who also just happened to be close friends with avid driving fan George Harrison as well. Stewart told Collins that Harrison was in the process of remixing the seminal album for its 30th anniversary re-release. 
Phil remembered that Jackie had asked him, quote, you were on it, weren't you? To which Phil replied, bemused, well, I was there. <laughs> the pair chatted for a few more moments and Phil thought nothing more of it. However, two days later, he received a small package from George Harrison. It's a tape with a simple handwritten note that said, could this be you? Phil pops the tape in and over the speakers comes the all things must pass track art of dying along with some of the most god awful conga playing that had ever been heard. Phil remembered quote, suddenly the congas come in too loud and just awful. At the end of the tape, you hear George Harrison saying, Hey Phil, can we try another without the conga player? So now I know they didn't go off to watch TV. They went somewhere and said, get rid of him because I was playing so badly. I'm sure that stung Phil's ego, even though the pop superstar surely at this point in his life had nothing left to prove to anyone. But soon we would find out truly how far George Harrison was willing to go for a good laugh. Phil remembered a few days later, Jackie Stewart called him. He said, quote, then Jackie rings and says, I've got someone here to speak to you and puts George on. And he says, did you get the tape? And I said, I now realize I was fired by a beetle to which George replied, don't worry, it was a piss take. I got Ray Cooper to play really badly and we dubbed it on. Thought you'd like it. I said, you f bastard. Collins added, bemused, it was lovely, wasn't it? So let's break this down. George actually had someone come in and horribly bang on Congress. He took time out of remixing All Things Must Pass to make this tape use studio time just to play an epic prank on Phil Collins. Remember, this was a man who was a huge fan of Monty Python. Harrison even went so far as to basically bankroll Python's 1979 film Life of Brian when the troupe had trouble getting funding. George also appeared in that film, and also in Eric Idle's 1978 Beatles parody, All You Need Is Cash, the story of the Ruddles. So... The quiet one clearly had a massive sense of humor and he would go to great lengths to needle his friends. I'm sure he got a great kick out of making one of the greatest drummers of all time question his talent, even if it was only for a couple of days. Anyway, that's the time that Phil Collins got epically pranked by George Harrison. I hope you enjoyed hearing this hilarious story of two megastars just having a little bit of fun with each other. Make sure you like the video if you think other music fans would like to see this story. And, of course, subscribe to the Guitar Historian channel for much more rock history content like this by clicking right here. And as promised, here's that link to the main All Things Must Pass documentary I did last week. Hope you enjoy, and we will see you next time on the Guitar Historian channel.